Hi, everybody. Dale Pinkert here at TradeGate Hub, and our special guest today is my trading warrior brother, David Brady. David, thanks so much. It's It's been too long since we've talked. I've missed you. <laughs> and I, you too, Dale. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. I mean, our first uh, interview, I believe, was way back in 2016. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. Wow. You know, it was an important interview, and I, I want to you know, bring it up that we do have this history. In fact, I remember during COVID or right before COVID, uh, when people would ask you about buying physical silver and you would say, what difference does 10 or 20 cents make even a dollar, you know, mm -hmm. uh, back then. And it really didn't because of what your long-term outlook was and the purpose of holding silver. And then I interviewed you right in this month right here during the midst of the COVID panic. And you told me that when this was happening, you were calling your physical broker and you were buying, you said, I just, you know, get me as much as you can. And this was kind of the inception of the separation of the paper market from the physical market, mm -hmm. because they're just, even at this price level, it wasn't as easy to get physical as it had been in the years past. So, Absolutely. yeah. So, I, I mean, that's, that was a very prescient call and uh, I'm, I'm fascinated to hear what your thoughts are now about silver. Uh, what I, the public is very bold up on silver, David, you know, we've had one heck of a rally from 17 and a half or so, um, everyone's calling 22 a breakout right here, and we're about to test highs. And I believe what I gleaned from you is that you think this is very crowded and there could be a surprise, and that surprise would be to the downside. So am I reading you correctly? You are reading me correctly, but first let me start by saying, you know, whenever you quote me or recite quotes from six years ago, I get very nervous. You know, what, what did I say? Oh, my God. They call uh, me the elephant, David. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> um, so, um, and the other thing I would say, I do put my money where my mouth is. Uh, I remember that period right uh, back then. I had just bought an off-grid property, and it's fully developed yeah. now. And uh, I, was in, uh, I was in my car at the time. I was driving up north and I was so desperate. I, uh, I was breaking the law. I was on my phone calling my broker <laughs> trying to buy a uh, thousand ounce bars of silver. You know, Don't try was... that at home. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I got them. But yeah, it worked out extremely well. And uh, yeah, you know this. That I've been long gold and silver since yeah. the second half of 2015. Yeah. And it was because... My process, which is the FIPES process, uh, we went through that in one of our previous uh, podcasts, um, basically told me that everything was pointing up. And when everything is pointing up, I go all in. And because uh, based on my re retroactive analysis, if you will, going back to 2006 and the COT data, looking at the sentiment data at peaks and troughs, the technical signals, the fundamentals, yada, yada, yada. When all of those are pointing in the same direction, you've got a very high probability of being correct. Yes, and confluence, confluence, everything coming together. Yes. Like a good lawyer, David, you go. A good lawyer goes into the courtroom with evidence, mm -hmm. not an intuition or a feeling. They yes. build the case to be compelled to take risk. Exactly. It's all about data. The problem, especially in the gold and silver sector, more so than any other, is uh, sentiment. And where you were just alluding to it just now, uh, yeah, silver is as bullish as it was back in March at twenty-one fifty. Now, okay, we That's... haven't seen we haven't seen that level since. I mean, in fact, we've just been going in the opposite direction until recently. So uh, what does that tell me now? It tells me that we're due a pullback at least. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a screaming bull. 
Uh, I've said that I believe the bottom is in in silver, gold, and the miners. Um, but yeah. there is a there's no confirmation of that yet. Uh, we're in what I call wave one pro Elliott wave theory, which is another okay. tool tool that I use in my arsenal, and uh, we are heading up towards a peak, or we may have already peaked, but. We need to go back down in wave two. Nothing goes up in a straight line, no matter how bullish the market is. And I'm, I've got to take care of my dog now. And in a second, he's annoying me. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, okay. No, no, so, no. So no, let me finish. Right. The, let me yeah. finish the point. Sorry, uh, Dale. That's okay. Um, so we are peaking in wave one. We've got a wave two pullback coming. The peak may already be in, but after that, wave two bottom hits. It's sayonara. I mean, we're going up to new record highs. Uh, I believe silver is going to 35 to 45. And we can talk about gold separately. But I believe that uh, gold is going to go to 2300 plus. So uh, the sentiment, though, in the short term is extremely bullish. And when I say pullback and people come out, uh, tweet to me, you know, oh, you're wrong. It's, It's going to go even higher and higher and higher. Uh, my uh, flippant response is you're just confirming what I believe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know? I saw the DSI, which is a sentiment indicator I follow. And uh, just about eight weeks ago, silver was 10, 15% bulls. Mm-hmm. And now we're at uh, 80 or higher now. Oh, so wow. You're right. So we are piling into it. And uh, one thing I have noticed, especially with the recent action, uh, like today was a pretty good day in silver, right? Even though we're pulling back, that mm-hmm. some of the silver miners uh, really uh, were not participating. And while I'm on miners, I want to pass on one of your pearls that I also remember, and I could quote you, that when I used to ask you about the miners, you would say, Dale, well, I buy the ETF SILJ because I've had the experience of being right the market and wrong the issue. So if you're picking individual silver miners, someone could come out and dilute, something Mm -hmm. goes wrong with a mine, and then you don't participate. So uh, this is one of David's maxims. If you wanna buy silver miners, uh, go to the ETF SILJ. You're still an advocate of uh, being in miners in that fashion. Uh, Absolutely, for trading purposes. Uh, I'll give you an example. There was a scenario there, I think it was a couple of years back, where First Majestic, which is one of the biggest oh, yes. uh, holdings in, this, in SILJ, yeah, and, it, and in SIL, yeah. uh, that, that had a bad earnings call, and it got yeah. absolutely hammered. Well, yeah. I looked at SILJ, and yes, it came off as a result because First Majestic was the biggest holding, but it was nowhere near the debacle that First Majestic got hit with. And so... Okay. I, I like SILJ because it's the highest beta you can get relative to silver in an ETF if you're going right. long. I mean, okay. you can look at the leverage plays, but I, I like to play it simple. There's no need to be greedy on this stuff. Okay. But uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. SILJ is one of my favorite tools for uh, uh, silver. And I, I don't want to leave silver just yet. You, you can see Neither in the I. chart that the peak at 23, it shows 50 right. on that chart. I've got a yeah. chart that shows, oh, that's, yeah, it's a four hour. Um, you can see that it became overbought and it needed a pullback. And there we are. Um, so in Elliott Wave theory terms, again, one of the tools that I look, look at, and we'll talk about internar- intermarket analysis with respect to the Dixie in a moment. But the I believe this is an A B C correction. You had A okay. down to twenty two there. Got it. Here's B. Here's B. And actually, I said uh, I posted it on Twitter, and the other uh, service I write for, SilverChartistPro.com, um, back on December sixth, uh, I said that Wave B is going to be around. I believe the peak uh, about. Uh, 22, 2320 to 2330. And where is that number there? That looks we got pretty close, close today. Yeah. We got up to uh, 20 and a half. Yeah. And about so, 78, 88% back. So the magnitude of C, David, are you looking for equality? Because sometimes C waves, I know enough about 
Elliot to be dangerous. Don't listen to me. <laughs> me too. But, I'm no expert. Uh, all right. So perhaps this was a buck and a half. Mm -hmm. And if this is a money wave, which I call threes and Cs, mm -hmm. could we have 1.618 of this, which would give you about a $2.40 decline? Mm -hmm. If th these are the peaks, it could take us back down into the, uh, you know, 2060, 2070 level. Is that what you're looking for? I have a broad range based on those who where A equals C, you're yeah. looking at around 2150 to 2190 area. Okay. But if you take into account what you just said, Dale, which is the 1.618 uh, C wave, yeah. yes, you're down in the 20s, maybe as far as 1950. Okay. So it, it doesn't hit these things, especially in silver because it's so volatile, it doesn't hit it, the nail on the head, but it no. comes close. As you saw today, we got to, you know, close to that 23, 20, uh, 23, 30 uh, target. Uh, but I believe the next leg is down. Now, let's, let's talk Dixie for a second. Um, these markets are all driven by the Fed. And I said way back on November 3rd that the Fed had pivoted. And I got a lot of hate mail on that one. Was that when they put out a Wall Street Journal article? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that Days was before. their that that was their intervention to cap the rally in U.S. dollar yen because no one was coming to the BOJ's aid up mm -hmm. here. Uh, yeah. But when they leaked that article, that was the high. Yeah, that was the high, and then on the, at the FOMC, uh, November second, in the in the statement, Powell said basically that they were going to slow rate hikes going forward. Now, my right definition here. of a pivot, which is different to most people, is that they're focusing, they think uh, consider a pivot to be a complete 180. I don't. Right. I consider it uh, that uh, a slowing pace. In, in, yes, pace. So, and to justify that, you, all you have to do is go back to December 19, 2018, when Powell. Oh, oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know where I'm going. Yeah, well, and, and they all got together, the trio. It was like Peter, Paul, and Mary singing Kumbaya. Yeah. And Jay got in line with, uh, uh, you know, with Bernanke and uh, Janet. And, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, or maybe listen to Kramer. <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> yeah that's that's you a, don't know what you're doing anyway so mm -hmm. yeah doesn't he flip like a hamburger uh yeah i just whatever he says i take the opposite view but anyway um yeah with regard to uh the december 19 uh statement from uh powell which by the way that day he hiked rates by another quarter point it was the statement he made thereafter in the conference where he said that we are closer to the neutral rate than we previously believed. And just that verbal comment led to the biggest rally in stocks for I, I don't know how long. That was the bottom. Right there. Four, four days later or five days later on December 24th, with the help of the PPT, off it went. Yeah. And uh, so did gold, by the way. That began gold's run to a new record high. Okay. So there was a case where Powell, the Fed, just made a verbal statement. And he hiked rates that day. And what happened next? Boom. So my yeah. point is now, back on November 3rd, when he said, we'll have basically confirmed that they were going to have slowing rate hikes. They're going to continue to hike rates, but they're going to be slower. In other words, 50 basis points as opposed to 75. I call that a pivot. Yeah. Because what I mean by a pivot is that means that it's like a ship. A ship doesn't turn on a dime. It takes time to do a complete reversal. And the fact that they're slowing their rate hikes tells me that the end is in sight for the tightening policy, much like what Powell stated back on December 19, 2018. That's what he said. We're close to the neutral rate. And look what happened. Look what happened to gold and silver on November 3rd. They just took yeah. off. Yeah. They took off. What happened to the Dixie on December 3rd? It just here, here accelerated. It yeah, look at it. Just accelerated to the downside. So that is a pivot. And then what did they do on November 30th? Just a week ago. 
they confirmed it again. They actually, you know, stated clearly that uh, I talked about the Brookings it. speech that he made. Yes. OK, that, that, that the Powell came out again and stated that, you know, you know, we're OK with uh, moderating our rate hikes going forward. That means you're slowing rates, rate hikes. So for me, that means that the worst is over with regard to Fed tightening policies. And then other people are hanging on. Oh, well, the, they haven't cut rates yet. That's by the time they cut rates, the market's probably going to go down based on hi history. When they start to slash rates, it's a panic. And stocks yeah. dump, gold dumps, everything dumps. It's before that, when they start to pivot the other way, is what you should be looking at. And uh, so I believe the Fed pivoted. And that's why you're seeing silver doing so well. You're seeing gold do so well. And you're seeing Dixie in the dumps when everybody was looking for 120 next and yeah. 160 next. I was looking south. And okay. here we are, we've got what a 10, you're an FX guy like me, 10 big figures inside a month in the dollar. Yeah. In, yeah. That's a massive move. It's, it's dramatic. It's dramatic. And we actually got 11 now. But now we're running into, as you show right there, big support at 104. That Look was how big this is, David. Here's a nice visual. Yes, I have that exact same chart. Uh, uh, well, you know. <laughs> Uh, brilliant Great minds. minds. <laughs> yeah. The, all right. So yeah, that this is a key for the dollar bolts. Yes, and it's holding so far. It's been tested. You're looking at a. Is that a one month chart? Yeah, monthly. Yeah. So that's a monthly. If you look at the daily, it's been tested and tested and tested. Yeah, right now, there. it could it could break. But if it does, I see it going only as far as that 102 number below. Because that's the 50% retracement of the entire move up from 89 to 115. So okay. uh, if we do, with all of these things, uh, I said there was going to be a pullback in gold and silver if we got above the 200-day moving average. And why did I say that? Going back to sentiment. Everybody's going to, and their dog's going to get bulled up. They're all going to be, oh, we're taking off. We're going to 30 next in silver. And we're going to uh, back to 2,000 next in gold. Now, what happens next? It goes south. And it had the same in, uh, I had the same, but in the opposite direction with regard to the Dixie. We get to 104 and that may hold yeah, and then bounce. But if we go down to 102, well, you hear everybody coming out. Oh, the dollar is going to 95, 90, the eighties. It's over, yeah. you know, forget the milkshake. But yeah. uh, that's when I go get ready for a bounce. And I don't know if the bottom is at 104 or 102, but what I do know, we're getting a bounce and it's going to be a big one. And it's 108 to 110 because everybody's right. starting to get sour on the dollar again. It's crowded uh, now. Uh, you know, in the, the opposite dollar, direction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's only about 35% dollar bulls. Uh, I mean, even stock players were all piled into UUP. Yeah. Uh, and so you had 90% bulls in the dollar near the peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it shifted dramatically. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's the same old story. Everybody gets on one side of the boat. <laughs> then, you know, the capsizes, it goes the opposite direction, you know? You know, so, I wanted to ask you, um, and uh, I know uh, that what this is just a correction, but you talked about that the Fed, by the time they're cutting, mm -hmm. they're doing it because there's a problem. Oh, yeah. And and I know a lot of people that are looking for a melt up in, you know, the dollar's bad. Mm -hmm. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. Dollar's good. Everything's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, looking for uh, about six months into the late spring, early summer before mm -hmm. the Fed does start to ease, which gives all markets about a six month window to perform. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you looking at you know, sometime in mid 23 for uh, another liquidation period in risk. Uh, uh, and could it be that the Fed may even have to tighten again? Isn't it possible that we end up with the, the 70s where central banks would tighten and then think they had it beat and had to come back and re and do it again several times, I think three or four times before Volcker got draconian, is it possible that he's pauses 
and that the numbers aren't good because they can't print food. And maybe we're going to have a, a some geo event to take crude back over 100. And a weak dollar makes everything more expensive and inflation stickier here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, so that he has to start to tighten again mid-year. Yeah, well, that's the coin toss because there is the other argument that uh, inflation has uh, peaked. Out, yes, outside of oil, which I believe is about to bottom and start its march up to a new record high at 150 plus. Um, wow. Everything else. That's a big call. Oh, yeah, that's that's uh, for me. I, that's bought it, I bought it today. You see that formation? Mm -hmm. Three drives to a bottom, massive yeah. divergence. So. I'm yep. trying it here. Yeah, I, I, I've got charts on this stuff too. And if looking at the, the weekly as well, it it's, looks like it's about to run out of steam on the yeah. downside. And it's going to begin, as I say, it's March up to 150 plus, in my opinion, a new record What's going to drive that? The war? Well, it's, it's, the weather. it's war. It could be anything. With You know, with oil, the problem with oil is it's controlled by the producers. It's, um, you know, yeah. the Saudis and the Russians and et cetera. So they, they could literally cut supply tomorrow and off it goes. Uh, geopolitical events, it, it, we don't know. Um, it's, it's a very tough one to call. But what I do is I look at the charts and I look at sentiment and I look at the cot data and so forth. And when it all says, you know, this thing's about to turn, all I'm waiting for is the catalyst, the trigger, and it'll be some headline, as it always is with oil. It'll be some headline that comes out and boom, off it goes. Uh, what it could be, for example, I'll give you another one, is the Saudis uh, basically drop the petrodollar. I, 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 you know, I was just thinking that. Because then oil is going to go ballistic in dollar terms. Yeah, uh, G, is, G is coming to Saudi Arabia. And they are laying out the red carpet for him mm -hmm. compared to when President Biden came oh. there to give him a fist pump. <laughs> a very so, lame fist pump. <laughs> yeah. So that would definitely reduce demand for dollars mm -hmm. if something like that happened. Yeah, look, I, I'm on record and I've done a podcast to this effect, Dale. Uh, I believe the dollar scheduled for demolition. And the rationale is I, when I said bounce here in Dixie, yeah, a bear market uh, rally. A bear market rally. But then we're going down to sub-90, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be worse than that. I think ultimately it's going to go down to sub-80, maybe even 70. And the yeah. rationale for that statement is that, look, there's a, a lot of things going on in the world. You know, We're talking about central bank digital currencies are being tested in Nigeria right now. I was uh, going to ask you about that, uh, mm -hmm. David. So do we have to have... Uh, Maybe the dollar has to get so bad and so weak that um, that's how they sell CBDCs to people. That uh, it'll be more stable when all it is is just more surveillance. Exactly. Uh, I think it's there, there, there's more to it as well that if the dollar is getting weaker, you know, inflation's taking off. And uh, but the biggest issue is that the foreigners lose uh, confidence in it. The Chinese, the Russians, Europe, everybody loses yeah. um, uh, confidence in the U.S. dollar, U.S. fiscal Bond. and monetary policies. And that's when we going back to your comment about the stock market in mid 2023 and what the Fed would do. I actually see a scenario where, yes, they might hike and so forth. But they're, they're in, they're absolutely cornered because, yeah, you could argue that they need to defend uh, the dollar. They need to keep uh, a lid on inflation. But what if, just bear with me, what if stocks are in trouble and the economy is in trouble? At the same time, you've got not just st stagflation. I, I coined this term with you way back in 2018, hyper stagflation, meaning Everything material is going one way, but prices are going in the opposite direction. And it, all the blame has to be laid at the central banks. But does the Fed hike to defend the dollar and get inflation lower? Or does it literally have to throw in the towel and make it even worse by printing to prop up the markets? And to and, inflate away the debt. 
to inflate away the debt and then to prop the, the stock market is the economy. If the stock market it is look, uh, let me get this out of the way. When we, uh, I think it was back in 2017, a subsequent uh, podcast, uh, it was um, people were saying that stocks were going down the toilet. And I said, no, 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 they're going up to new record highs. And boy, because the Fed's going to print. Well, I, I believe that we're going to go up to ne- uh, uh, new record highs again. We're going to get a melt up. The Fed's going to, okay. uh, you know, either. And it doesn't necessarily need to cut. It could be just pause. Like they've said, we're going to keep it higher for longer. And it goes up to north of 5,000 in the S&P. But what happens next? I believe, and uh, you can, everybody can pin me on this, we're going to 1,000 or below. That's an 80% okay. drop in the stock market. Right. So that, uh, going back to the, 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 the comments that you made, does the Fed step in to bail out stocks or does it r- raise rates to conquer inflation? Either way, it's screwed. Because the Fed it, buys stocks. Buys stocks, yes, but you, you're, you're printing money to do that. Right, yeah. You know, but, and uh, you're, in, <laughs> you're propping up that wealth effect again, which is a nonsense. My point is that they're, they're cornered either way. If they go to after inflation, then you've just destroyed the economy. You've destroyed the stock market. And maybe that's the plan. I don't know. But if you cut and you start printing money again to prop up the markets and the economy, what do you think happens to inflation? I mean, yeah, we, hype, we have hyperinflation. The risk of it, yeah. Uh, and when here's my end game, and I've said this a few times the end game is when the Fed is cutting rates, printing currency, QE, and stocks keep going down. Pushing on a string. Meaning they are powerless. They can't do anything. At that point, this is where it gets to the nexus of it. At that point, the Fed is forced literally to throw in the towel because they've lost all power over the markets. Uh, When they do that, which means that they stop printing money, they leave rates at zero and it's game over because uh, if they're not propping up the markets, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's going to collapse. It needs ever increasing inflows of capital to keep it going up. And if that's removed, it's falling into the abyss. And that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, And that's why you're, you have a place off the grid. And uh, I buy gold and silver, and I grow my own food. And yes, because now you're getting dark. I don't want to go off the rails too much on this, but we're going to very dark. Yeah, we're going to very dark times here. Yeah, And it's all with a purpose, but uh, I won't get into that. But with regard to the markets, my belief is we are going to get a melt up into the S&P one way or another. But once we cross uh, 5,000, I'm going to try, well, I would love to buy puts left, right, and center just a year, two years out and just sit on them. Leaps. And uh, and at that point, yes. And at that point, you're, you'll are you get them for pennies on the dollar because you're the S&P is hitting new highs. Everybody's yeah. bullish and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And, and you're buying in the opposite direction. It's like- I know guys talking 6K or higher. Yeah, I don't see that. Uh, okay. But it could be, just, it could yeah. be, it could be. Yeah, I'm just saying. But uh, my point is that whether it's five or six, it's going to a thousand. Your target uh, in silver sounds conservative in this background. What do you think of this? I just, you know, you talk 2300 gold, right? And a lot of people have been talking 23, 2500 gold. Mm-hmm. So I, I look at the gold silver ratio. I want to ask you about it too. Mm-hmm. Um, is uh because i think that you're going to get your silver correction when this turns and you're going to get your dollar rally when this turns Mm -hmm. so i was just hypothesizing that eventually though the gold silver ratio goes to the mean about 40 43 Mm -hmm. so if gold is 2400 that gives you 60 dollars silver and new all-time highs is Mm -hmm. that rational to you it is but it's all about time frames i mean the let's say we get 2300 plus in gold and i'm saying 35 to 45 in silver you're still at a gsr of around 60 50 okay well but 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 that's just the first peak 
I I I, I don't be, I don't believe we're done there. We'll get yeah. a big fat pullback, but I believe gold and silver have a long way to go before they get into a bubble, and, and this could be a decade long decades long rally. It's gold's turn. It's silver's turn. It's a, a tangible assets. Given the state of the world, it makes perfect sense. But it's it's cycles. It's gold and silver's turn to take off. Now, I don't know if Bitcoin is going to play a part, but I do know that the physical metals are just going to go ballistic. And my only concern with the miners is that when you make a ton of money in the miners and you sell it, what are you getting? A worthless currency. Worthless yeah. fiat. You yeah. know, so whereas with the physical metal, you have it in your hand and you can sit on it as long as you want. I've used it in transactions here in Canada to buy equipment, to buy cement, people want it. Yeah. And it's becoming- Try and a, find it now. Yeah, but it's becoming a currency again in trade. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so um, I believe that gold and silver have a long way to go on the upside. And especially imagine if, there's so many scenarios here, I'll just name a, very cu a couple. Uh, the rubles pegged to the to gold. Uh, the uh, the wow. one is pegged to gold. The ESDR, the new global currency to replace the dollar, the basket of currencies has gold in it, in the yeah. basket. Yeah. They can always remove it later, like they did in 1971. But in order, if you have a collapse of confidence in the dollar and therefore all currencies, you know, the euro's toast too, um, you're going to have to provide confidence in some manner. And the only way you can do that, as you know, Weimar Germany illustrated, is you're going to have to back it with something real and tangible uh, that has value, not the faith of the government and yada, yada, yada. You need something tangible, and gold is it. And the BRICS have already talked about this. They've talked about using gold, uh, oil, natural gas, a whole bunch Ghana, of things. Ghana, Ghana buys its oil by selling gold. Yeah. And why wouldn't they? They have plenty of gold, not so much dollars. But um, yeah, that's where we're headed. So when yeah. we talk about 2300 plus and uh, the 35 to 45, I'm being conservative because uh, I think that's prudent. Rather than throwing out ridiculous numbers like 10,000 or 20,000, we'll get there. But, you know, baby steps. We get, we get up to those numbers, and then we get a nice big fat pullback, and then you buy again, if it's still available. You know, I kind of think that maybe we get to that 2300 um, when the S&P is melting up towards your targets. Exactly. And then when we get a crack in the S&Ps, it creates a sympathy decline in the metals, and that's mm -hmm. a break to buy in a bull market. Yeah, but when the dollar gets into trouble, when the dollar is sinking and they talk about bringing in a new currency and then they talk about maybe backing it with gold yeah. and possibly silver as well, then their gold and silver take off again. Yeah, I'm just saying that, uh, that they probably pull back with the initial break in the market. I agree completely. I, and that's that's yeah. where I'm at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to cover, David? I mean, uh, you know, I, I think people are going to enjoy listening to it. I know that, uh, you know, I feel energized from hearing your ideas and uh, kind of gives me conviction about what I was thinking. You know, why don't you just tell people what you think is going to be the most important thing for them to do with the new year coming in 2023? Whoa. Well, uh, I'll be repeating myself. Uh, so many people are distracted by such mundane day-to-day -day issues, uh, my wife included. And it's very hard to get it into their heads. But as I explained to my father when he thought I was nuts with all this stuff, uh, my two cents is this. Dad, if I'm wrong, what's the worst that could happen? I'm the butt of jokes at dinners. I lose a few thousand dollars. I have to sell a property that I, you know, built up and whatever, and it's all of being a waste. So I'm out like a couple of hundred thousand dollars, and then you guys are making fo uh, fun of me over the turkey at Christmas. I can live with that because what that means is everything's gone back to normal. Everything's, yeah. you know, gotten better. Yeah. Now let's look at the other side of that coin. I'm right. I'm going to be better off than 99% of the population. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is uh, 
financially you don't have to load the boat but you should have some gold and silver as insurance for what's coming um that's that's a given okay you you need to grow your own food with the policies being rolled out by these governments across the world and the the curtailment of fertilizer and so forth uh and paying farmers to cull their herds yada 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 um you need to grow your own food you need to become self-sufficient basically you don't rely on the government because once the government you're reliant on the government to any extent they own you it's buy a consistent. silo yeah. Buy, yeah, live, yeah buy a silo do you have a silo on your property where you could uh store grain i've got a root cellar okay we call it here yeah so, it's the same thing yeah I, you know, I've told people in charities, et cetera, that um, have to provide food for people that are unfortunate and are hungry mm -hmm. to just go along the futures, take delivery and put it in a silo. Yes, I've uh, heard right you say now. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so uh, beans are acting the best, but I have to think that wheat's a value down here at $7. Actually, it was twice as much on the invasion. Yeah, that so, or millet, yeah. Yeah, you know. so, yeah. So yeah, good beans, advice. beans, rice, and uh, millet or wheat. Uh, okay. That's the way to go. You, you'll need carbs more than ever. You won't need that treadmill anymore. Um, but the, you, you need to be self-sufficient. And what that is, is basically uh, you need to have energy, whether it's wood, gas, yeah. oil, best, even though it's part of the problem in the world, solar and wind, uh, and a battery backup. Yeah. So you need energy, you need food, obviously, you need a water source, you need a community, you can't be just be doing it by yourself, you need to you have people around, like-minded people around you. Security, I got two German Shepherds for a reason, and I won't go into any more than that, you, you get where I'm going. Yeah. And uh, shelter, obviously, you, you need, yeah. need some place to live in. Back so, to the basics. Back to the basics, back to, you know, we're going back 100 years while these guys want to put chips in our brains. Yes. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's just going to be a very difficult time in the next few years. And then on top of that, there's, so, there's a confluence of negative events happening, not just led by the powers that be. But you've got, they're talking about global warming. I believe in the grand solar minimum, which means That's we're actually to global. The other way. Yeah, like everything else. Whatever they say, age. it's the exact opposite. A new ice age. <laughs> yes. A new ice age. Yes. It's now, cold here in Southern California this winter it's unusually warm up here in Canada in December. Um, yeah. The jet streams are all getting thrown out of whack. The, the magnetic field, the North Poles are moving. The, this yeah. isn't rocket. This isn't conspiracy theory. Go check out NASA's website. And uh, so it's all happening and we, we're going to get, uh, have difficulty growing food even more so going forward. So you asked me uh, basically recommendations on how to manage your life going forward you need to look after yourself and your family and your friends and all get together because it's going to be extraordinarily difficult time community um, and if you're wrong great if i'm wrong great <laughs> means everything's fine i'll take that yeah but if it's not you're it's better to be prepared than not and uh, that's that's what i'm saying so yes i i i Monitor the markets. I'm a big believer in precious metals, but you can't rely just on precious metals. Yeah, you could get rich off it, but what are you going to what are you what are you going to eat? You know, do you, do you have food around? Do you have any seeds? Do you have anything in your silo? Do you have anything in your root cellar? I mean, and if you have some Amish and Mennonites around, that would be great too. Those are those guys are a great resource. Yeah, they're 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 still living that way. Yes. They never came. Yeah, they never came up. Uh, you know, they they missed all the, you know, fun with technology, but they're ready. So. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I appreciate it, David. I so I I guess, what it all comes down to, is you don't know if you really have faith until you need it. Yeah. Pretty much. And we're gonna find out, huh? Yeah, but it's it's better be to uh, look. I, I've ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure. Yes, and when I was managing money, uh, my my modus operandi, um, 
guys, can you keep it down, please? Uh, the modus operandi uh, was always prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And it stood me very well, even the financial markets over the years, over decades. And that applies to your personal life too. If you're prepared, I'm sorry for repeating myself. If you're prepared, actually, if you're prepared in terms of food, for example, and I said this to my father too, we've got rampant inflation going on. Uh, I bought bags of rice for $4 at Walmart. Uh, worst case scenario, it's almost double price now. Yeah. So it's you, you nice least trade. You, yeah, but exactly. You're, you're you know you're not I've, going I've, back to sell them and uh, and uh, return them. No, I've got uh, I've got them all canned. I've got, I was just kidding. I, I, I've been canning stuff like no. It was a hundred percent move, David. Yeah. You know, I thought you might want to take a take apart, take a little out, take partial profit. Be, oh, it's only getting started. It's it's yeah. it's in a bull run. It's par, going parabolic, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I've got thousands of pounds of food at lower prices, and I continue to add to it because it'll be worth more than anything else going forward. Yeah. Um, but if I'm wrong, great. And that's the way people should be thinking, because if you can't eat or you can't drink, if you've no water, you, then what's it over? Your, yeah, exactly. So, so in it, the meantime, in the meantime, for people that uh, are living for now and won't mm -hmm. be prepared, but uh, want are interested in your trading capabilities, yeah. is this the best place uh, for your new service for them to get a hold of you? You can find me in three places, Dale. You can find me on Twitter where I do post free uh, my views on the markets uh, okay. at Global Pro Trader. Uh, you can also find me uh, on SprottMoney.com where I provide a free article. Uh, it'll be a little late today for obvious reasons, but it's coming out today. And you can also find me at uh, SilverChartistPro.com which is a subscription-based service. And I think it's one of the best. Uh, it's no nonsense. And we are objective in the sense that we can be bearers and bullish when the opportunities arise. I find in our this um, sector is too many cheerleaders. They're always bullish. Um, it's nice to have somebody say, no, it's going down. And yeah. uh, so sure. I... And one other thing before, I, 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 while I still have the chance, I wanted to mention. So with regard to the stock market, uh, I believe that we've got a pullback coming. Uh, and we've got a couple of data points coming up, PPI tomorrow yeah, yeah. and CPI on Monday. And then you got the Fed. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be volatile over the next few days. I, I got a sneaking feeling that, you know, given everything to this point has been somewhat dovish. Hence why gold and silver he's gonna, are going up. Yeah, he's uh, going to end up uh, being... Uh, uh, Mr. Hyde instead of Dr. Jekyll. There you go. Next week. And, and these guys can make these numbers, whatever they want, especially when it comes to the inflation numbers. Uh, there's a high risk that these things come in on the high side. And, you know, that pullback that I've been talking about, if we, if we walk in tomorrow and the, I, I've looked at the expectations numbers, they're well below last month's. So we could even have a lower PPI number at the core and headline, but it's higher than expectations. Watch what happens. You're going to see gold and silver get slammed. Uh, but it'll be brief. And then you got the CPI the following Monday. And then on Wednesday, you got the FOMC. So it's going to be an interesting time. But I believe that the S&P is looking okay around just below 4,000. Uh, I think 3,700 could be tested again. Look at, and, this, uh, look at this black fan line. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I'm watching. 3,700 again. All right. I want to know where you have the camera in my head. <laughs> uh, we... No, I, I have the same charts as you, which is scary. You see that yeah. black line you have going yeah. to the upside? Yeah. We broke yeah. that. Yeah. That's a breakdown right there. Yeah. And yeah. We, we may back test it or not. Maybe it's already gone, but it's going down to 3,700. And this is why. The, the, guys, you have to have a, a holistic view of the markets. Don't just look at the S&P. Don't just look at gold. And don't just look at silver. Look at them all because they're all being, this is a centrally managed market. So what this, the central managers are doing is affecting all markets. So if well, I think the S&P is going down to 3,700, well, what could drive that down? Well, high inflation numbers, yeah. higher expectations yeah. for rates. What does that do to yields? 
Yeah. Yields are going to go back up. I have that for TLT too. And then what yeah. does that do to uh, gold and silver? Oh, dollar oh. is going to go up. Yeah. And, the and gold, then gold corrects to 1700 or so. There you go. Yeah. It's not rocket science. But, <laughs> but you know what? You didn't know this your first couple of years into it. No, we it did. took That's a long, long time ago. Took a long time for you to look at the jigsaw puzzle and put all the correlations together and uh, always being skeptical about what you're hearing. That took you yeah. a while, right? Oh, oh yeah. I had to yeah, I had to figure out that most of the time when it's going up to peaks or going down to troughs, or let me put it a different way. When you got a strong rally for a period of time or you got a strong decline to the downside for a period of time, more often than not, it's going to turn. Mm -hmm. Catching that turn is difficult, especially if it's a trending market. But if you use data to help you, a uh, multidiscipline process like mine, where you've got all, I use multiple tools. I, I, I'm tired of listening to purists. So Elliott Wave's best, technical analysis is best. No, fundamentals are best. Sentiment is nonsense. You know, uh, intermarket analysis, all correlations break down. No whatever you put them all together they all have merit and when they all say the same thing it's pretty obvious what's going to happen next so uh i had to learn that yeah. <laughs> and the way to do it and i i i, I i'm no genius dale I, I don't pretend to be all i did was go back and look at every peak and trough in every single market i mean major peak you're not every little peak the majors to 2006 and what happened across every one of those tools and what were the fun ones and look up the news at the time and it's consistent and it's hard work and most people are too lazy to do that legwork and you can't learn experience it only comes from living through stuff yeah. and and adversity and if you if you if you only have a 50 50 chance of being right in the markets going in and you can increase that to 60 40 or 70 30 you're well ahead of the game as long as you know how to use a stop you're, you're always going to come out on top the odds are in your favor imagine going into a casino with 70 30 odds in your favor but you've yeah. got data on your side too so that's why i only play the extremes i don't okay. get into the noise in the middle i just sit and wait, watch a movie with the, the, this, the screen open beside me. And I wait for targets to be hit. And then when I look at my uh, various tools and they all say the same thing, that's when I go in big. It's like the guy at the poker table is waiting for the two aces to uh, be dropped on him. And, uh, you know, then he goes in big. But, uh, yeah, I, I believe that going back to the S&P 3700 going north, yields up, uh, dollar up metals pull back and pull metals. back yeah. yeah and then wait you see dale we'll get this pull back it'll be sharp in the wave c down and everybody will start losing their uh yeah. you know, all that bullishness starts to evaporate immediately yeah. and that's then when i'm sitting at the bottom mine give it to me i'll yeah. take it all you know trading places well david i i want to wish you and your family a merry christmas great holiday happy new year and uh I hope you're wrong. <laughs> about, about which the, part? Not, you, know, you know, not about the trades. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, not about the trades. But I, I appreciate being uh, able to talk to you again. And let's not let years pass us by. Keep in touch before mm -hmm. the end game. And One more I, time, huh? All right, buddy. One more time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hope I'm wrong to i know i yeah. know you do yeah but but i'm not going to be caught off guard if i'm right so yeah. um I, I appreciate it i always enjoy our conversations and based on our charts alone we're so on the same page it's an echo chamber we need to disagree more next time i promise <laughs> I'll, i could do that <laughs> <laughs> all right yes great david talking david to brady you. thank you so much for spending time and sharing your wisdom with us today Thanks very much, Dave. I look forward to the next one. It was great. Cheers. All right, everyone. David Brady, follow him on Twitter at Global Pro Trader. Check him out on his new service. Uh, David knows uh, to look for the swings at silverchartistpro.com. And you could also see him write his writings on the name of the website again. They're pretty big. Yeah, it's the biggest uh, dealer. Sprott. Sprottmoney.com. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Yeah, Eric All right, Sprouse. David. Happy okay. holidays, buddy. Oh, you too. Enjoy. All them. right. All right. Cheers.